Hello guys, welcome back. It is that time once again. We're here for week number nine Overwatch League predictions. So, as we transition, keep transitioning into this um, permanent online period of OWL, um, we got week number two coming up. A little bit different than last week. Um, got about the same amount of matches. However, a couple of the uh, Chinese matches, as you can see, there's the 3 a.m. and the 5 a.m. once again um, on Sunday, but none on Saturday. It is on uh, Monday instead. So um, for those of you like me who live in the U.S., that won't really matter as much. We won't be watching those um, unless, you know, unless you're up at 3 and then 5 in the morning. Um, so those will have to be VODs, but, you know, it makes sense because that's a much better time um, for them in China. But um, but for those, we got pretty much same matchups, just those four teams. Um, we get to see Shanghai, Hangzhou, Chengdu, Guangzhou, and then um, then they will flip once again. So um, we do get to see a couple of rematches there and um, one of the matches that has not happened yet, which is Shanghai and um, Hangzhou. But um, uh, but after that, looking forward at week ten, um, then uh, Vancouver is going to be um, participating with them as well. So they won't have to play the other three Chinese teams every match going forward, which is which is good. Um, this is the official um, schedule for week number ten. It is confirmed, um, as well as obviously for this week, week nine, um, and then nothing for eleven yet. I'm I'm assuming that they'll keep doing it by like. Uh, a week or two in advance um, as we kind of feel out how, uh, what teams can do connection wise but we do have some teams that uh, that weren't playing last week back in action like Paris Houston Philly Washington and Dallas so should have a lot of fun going forward so starting off on Saturday we got Toronto facing off against Washington battle of the two and four teams um, you know, both in both in need of wins. Toronto did get back um, on the win train um, last week. However, I think Washington will be a little bit of a tougher match this time. Um, I think these are two fairly even teams in terms of skill. Um, they both have several issues, which has you know led to some of their losses. But they do have a, a good talent level. They are both teams I think that I think could make a push for um, play-ins. So. It is a crucial match for both of them. I hemmed and hawed. Um, as a reminder, the heroes out of rotation this week uh, for tank wrecking ball is out. No more hamster, which could be important um, for control maps because we saw, particularly in the Chinese matchups, but a little bit outside of them, um, hamster was pretty popular on the control maps. Um, not as much so on the other ones, but that could change several maps going forward. So something to watch for, especially with Chengdu, of course, um, Amang, the, the god of uh, Hamster himself. But besides Wrecking Ball, for support, uh, Brigida is out. Um, last week we saw a lot of Brigida and Zen. This week I'm going to predict we see a return to Lucio and Ana. Um, who knows for sure, but I don't really see Zen um, being played too much I don't think the I don't think it quite meshes well. And then for DPS we have McCree, and then of course May is out. Rejoice, everyone! Praise the sun. Um, we do not have to see any May this week in OWL. It's awesome. Um, if you didn't see, they did the hero picks. Um, they did it from Zoe's house, and they had her cat Nori, um, like whichever one that uh, he would sniff or hit with you know with his paw um they took out so good job nori got rid of that may um the, you know that that really opens up the comps um i'm predicting we're gonna see a lot of ryan and zarya but we, we could still see double shield um it was popular last week i i just think that may is a very central part of that composition so it's very, very possible that we see double tank, but I could also see Ryan Zarya being used a good amount, or, or as well as Ryan uh, Diva, and then maybe a little bit of Winston here and there on certain maps, maybe control um, points. I could see him being used a little bit more, especially now that uh, May isn't there to really, really punish his uh, dives into backlines. So I like the hero bands this week. It should be super interesting. 
um, going back to the match, I'm going to take Toronto here 3-2. to two. I just think that I like Toronto on control maps a bit more than Washington. Washington has seemed a little bit out of sorts on those maps. Um, and if they, if Toronto can run that Winston, they've been very good at that in particular. Um, and they're also a team that kind of suffered with May. I don't think they have a really good May player. Um, Agilities has never impressed me on May. Um, he's definitely more of the Farah and Genji, um, and Junkrat guy, but, um, I'm going to give them the slight edge, um, in the series. I think they're just better on control and, in Overwatch League, you know, if you can win those control maps, you win the first map, and then if you can win one of the other map types, you get to go 2-2 uh, to the final, and um, I think that they will get it done. Um, I think that they're starting to finally kind of come together and solidify as a team. None of the big tanks or DPS um, are out of the hero pool for them. Um, if they can play Tracer, they have two extremely good ones, um, and Agilities, like I said, he can fill in those... Um, the the projectile rolls really well so i think this should be a pretty solid week for toronto i'm going to give them the edge three to two over washington then we got the gladiators sitting at one and two taking on dallas fuel who are zero and two so i like gladiators i think they're better um they i mean they beat shock dallas lost to shock however both of these teams um had suffered a couple of losses that was like, oof, kind of rough. Dallas lost a tough one to the Valiant. Uh, Gladiators just kind of fell flat against the May um, of uh, Seoul last week, so they uh, dropped that match. But again, I think the Gladiators are another team that they don't really have an amazing May player, um, and they're only going to be better moving forward without the May this week. My main concern for Gladiators, they seem like they have one style that they play. They run the Rhine, the Zarya, and then they have Mirror on the Doomfist. And when that doesn't work, or when teams counter it, they don't really know what to do. Um, so that that's a little bit of a concern for me. However, no McCree in the pool, that's a buff to Doomfist. Um, so I'm going to take the Gladiators here. I haven't seen enough of Fuel. We obviously haven't seen them since week number one, their homestead. Um, but I think Gladiators are a better team overall. We've seen more from them. Uh, this should be a solid, um, solid meta for them. They should be able to run the, the Rhine Zarya or, or Rhine Diva if they want to, which, um, OGE and Nevix like those heroes. So I'm going to give them the edge here. I think Mirror pops off. Bird Ring has been playing extremely well so far. So I'm going to give them the edge. I'll say three to one. I think they also take a map. Then we got a rematch of next, or of, sorry, next week. We have a rematch of last week, uh, LA Valiant taking on San Fran Shock. So the Shock, uh, they're one and two. <laughs> I don't think a lot of people would have thought that um, if if you had told them that before the season started. Valiant coming off and you know another another solid win. They took down Shock three to one. Um, I think main issues with the Shock that I saw was they stylistically they didn't really have a lot of variation um as soon as they had the Rhine zarya with sinatra on the zarya you know they're not going to switch to anything else because sinatra can't really play any other tanks or i've never seen him play another tank um at at the owl level so that could be it's a little concerning for shock i want to see Troyoban back in I, I get the I get the idea of going back to Sinatra on Zarya because he's such a good Zarya, but it just doesn't really work in this meta. Um, in Goats, it was obviously a lot better because Zarya was the damage um, for your team. She, I mean, she was the by far the majority, but now with two DPS players in every match, the, it really changes it up, and he can't really have that same impact that he once had last season. Um, also, I don't know... San Francisco, all they had to do was run Rascal on May. He's probably the best May in the world. He's he's definitely in the upper tier in the world of Mays, no doubt. Um, they could have just run that and and won easily. I'm not sure why they didn't. I don't know if something's happening with Rascal. We haven't really seen him in too much, but um, I don't know. Kind of kind of head scratching. I'm going to go with San Francisco here. It probably makes more sense to go with Valiant, but I just can't picture San Fran going to 1-3. They have too much talent for that, and I think that 
Um, unless there is a large skill discrepancy between the two teams, it's really hard to beat teams multiple times in a row. There obviously is not a large skill discrepancy here. If it is, it's in favor of San Francisco, not Valiant. So I'm going to say the Shock bounce back and take it 3-1. to one. Um, But if they lose again this week... I think there's some lit. I think they play twice as well. No, they don't. They play. That's right. They play in week ten as well. But I think if you're if you're the shock and you lose again this week, there's legitimate cause for concern. But as of right now, I'm gonna say don't panic. It's only a couple of games. Um, only one week of you know that little mini meta. So I think San Francisco bounces back and gets a win on the board here. Then we got Shanghai and Hanzhou. This one's tough for me. Shanghai is going to be a team that I think vexes me and a lot of other people all season. They're going to have uh, pretty varying performances. Um, I'm going to take Shanghai here because I just haven't been super impressed with Hanjo. I don't. I've just. I've never been that impressed with Hanjo, even last season when they were winning a ton of games. So maybe it's just a thing in my brain. I don't. I don't have anything against them. It's just their style of play and, you know, their players and how, how they've won matches in the past. It's They win a lot of close ones, and they just kind of find ways to win, which there's nothing wrong with that. But at times, Shanghai looks absolutely dominant. Um, this team, I think, has even a little bit more talent than last season, which they made play-ins and they won a stage playoff, which is very impressive. Um, so I'm going to take Shanghai here. I'll say it's a 3-1 to one. But it's kind of like, which Shanghai is going to show up? Um, I, I do think that they bounce back, though. Fleta, it, Fleta is just so good. He played so well on that May. Even though May's not available this week, it's Fleta. He's so flexible. He's going to pop off on another hero that is good this week. You don't really have to worry about that. And I've been impressed with their tank line as well. I think Void in particular was really, really good on the Sigma. And we know that he's a really solid D.Va player as well. Um, and he can, he, you know, he can play as Aria. It's, it's decent. So I think that Shanghai is in good position here and they get win number two. Then Chengdu versus Guangzhou. See, this is a tough one because I think on paper Guangzhou is clearly better, but Guangzhou's style has always been a little bit sloppy and they're a little bit brawly. And one thing we know about Chengdu, they excel in brawly, weird fights. So, I'm going to go for an upset here. I think without Wrecking Ball, it does not matter. Chengdu gets it done in 5. They take it 3-2. to two. Guangzhou is very, very talented. But I still think there's just a couple of things holding them back. Like I said, sloppiness, alt, alt mismanagement has been pretty big this season. And honestly... Um, I think Krong has had some nice moments, but he's also a new player in the lineup um, this season. He was down in contenders last season, and they had Hotba for their off tank. But now he is the um, you know, he is the off tank for him now that Hotba is on New York. So I still think there's a little bit of synergy that needs to happen between him and Rio. Um, or Rio, sorry. Um, him and Rio aren't quite on the same page quite yet. I don't think and. Their, the Guangzhou's, um, their uh, DPS have been a little bit up and down as well. Happy has been a pretty freaking streaky player. Uh, Nero's, Nero's best heroes are Mei and Hanzo. Mei is gone. If Hanzo is, you know, if Hanzo gets a lot of usage, maybe, I mean, he could find success there. Also, if Farah is meta um, for the week, uh, Nero's an extremely good Farah. But who knows? I don't. I don't know. I think Farah might be used on a couple of maps, but I don't see her getting a ton of usage um, with with Widow still hanging around. But I just have a feeling that the Hunters are going to pull this off. Their DPS have a ton of talent. Bacon Jack had a really, really nice performance um, last week. You know, And Jinmu, besides his absolutely head-scratching blade usage at times, he's still an extremely, extremely talented player. So I think they get the job done in five um, in a bit of an upset. Then we got Houston coming off of back-to-back -back victories, taking on Paris. Uh, Paris did just lose one of their um, their uh, off supports in um, Hip. He decided to retire from you know the team and professional Overwatch. Um, 
think cited some uh, just like you know mental mental attitude just trying to um, get more like positivity I guess in, in his life you know because it's it's very stressful and very taxing to be a player you know we've heard about this since Overwatch League began and it's not just a thing for Overwatch it's for other esports as well um, it's you know it's extremely taxing so wish him all the best in his future endeavors um, in terms of how that affects Paris we've seen more of Grey anyway so I don't see that affecting them too much as of right now um but but yeah like i said wish him all the best moving forward i'm gonna take paris here houston has looked better um we'll see if they can run that winston style with like the legs um and the tracer which found a lot of success for them last week um you know they I could see Houston winning this. I just think that Paris has been playing better in the season overall. Um, there aren't any huge heroes um, that are going to be out of the rotation for them. Um, you know, they have Soon on the... Tra if, if we do see a lot of Tracer, um, they can match Dante with Soon. Um, so they don't have to worry about that as much. Um, and Exe, he's been so good so far as a rookie. Um, and their tank line has been really, really good as well. So... I, I like Paris a little bit more here. I think they're just a bit of a uh, cleaner team. They're going to execute more. Um, they're going to execute more set plays, and they're going to do better when they're defending um, like points that are easier to uh, defend. If that makes sense, like second point Eichenwald, certain two CP uh, points. I think Houston's going to struggle a little bit to to really um, have good attacks. But when it gets brawly, I think Houston's got a chance. So I like Houston to win a map, probably control. But in the end, I'm going to take the Eternal, taking it 3-1. to one. And we got Washington back in action against Philly. Uh, second meeting of these teams this year. Philly won the previous one, 3-1. to one. But it was a pretty close match, though. Washington definitely, definitely made him work for it a bit. So I think Philly wins again here. Um... I think Washington will keep it close, but again, Washington's another team for me that they just haven't really clicked, and I don't really trust that against a team like Philly, who has been very, very solid this season. Um, one of the stigmas around them for the first two seasons was that they were super inconsistent. You never knew which Philly you're going to get. I think we've gotten pretty much the same Philly this whole season. I think that their team, um, like the the entire chemistry, the attitude um, from the team is a lot better this year. Um, I think they're enjoying these uh, metas a lot more than Goats. Goats just really wasn't their thing. Um, no more McCree for Carpe, but there's still Tracer and, of course, Widow. So I think they'll be fine there. They have other flexible DPSs as well. And um, I believe Hisu is finally is finally old enough. I believe he turned 18 like a week or two ago. So, ooh, he, he, he can pop off. So, we'll see if we see him at all. I'll watch for that. But like I said, Philly, I just feel better about them. I trust them more than Washington right now. Like I said, I, I just got to see more from Washington before I say they can take down a team like Philly. So, I'll say Philly takes it 3-1 to one again. And speaking of rematches, Dallas Fuel versus LA Valiant. Um, Valiant did beat them, like I said, in week number one. Dallas, they'll either be 1-2 and two or 0-3 oh at this point, so they really need those wins. Again, I'm going to go for a little bit of an upset here. I'll say Dallas wins. I saw some things I liked from Dallas the first couple of games. If this coaching staff is good... This has to be, they've had so much time, and I know that there have been circumstances, obviously, with the pandemic, but I, if there's going to be a time that they are going to start to turn the season around, they have to do it now. The first two seasons, both times, they just got off to these bad starts, um, especially in season one, and they couldn't really recover from it, so they've got to win a match this week. If you're own 4 it's starting to look real grim. You know, the, how, how are people's mentals holding up after that? And the Valiant have been a really, you know, they've been a solid team, better than a lot of people thought they would be this season. Um, but they are a beatable team for the fuel. They are beatable. So are the Gladiators for that matter. Um, so, like I said, you've got to get it done. They've got the pieces. They In their first two games, like I said, they they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Shock. They, they had some great plays from Decay. 
and I like their tank line as well. I think the Gamsu note has been really solid. And if they play really solid and they enable their DPS to pop off, they can win matches. So I'm I'm gonna go for go for the fuel here. I think Decay and, and Doha do enough for them. Um, and they take it in a fifth map. I'll say it goes to five. Then we got the Hunters and the Dragons. Uh, the Hunters 3-0'd last time. This is the Chinese teams. Shanghai 3-0's them. I'm going to say Shanghai 3-0's them this time. Because why not? That's that's just how it seems to go down with these teams. Chengdu's going to get a nice win against Guangzhou. And then, boom, Shanghai's going to take it right back. And then, for the final game, we got Guangzhou and Hanzhou. Um, like I said... Obviously, if you don't want to watch these games live, that's fine. It makes sense. But go back and watch the VODs because these are extremely fun matches to watch. Uh, Guangzhou and Hangzhou. I'll say Hangzhou. Clutches it out in map 5. 3-2. to two. Why not? I think that they have... They still have that really solid back line. I think uh, BB, Bebe, however you say his name, has been playing a lot better this season. And IDK is going to be back on that Lucio, um, popping off because the man is a monster on Lucio. Um, and I I really like Gushui as well as the main tank. Um, I think that the support and the tank line will, in the end, carry them over Guangzhou by just a little bit. So, there we go. Week number nine predictions. We got a lot of interesting ones, a lot of uh, rematches from weeks prior, um, but it's been a long time, and we have different heroes banned. So uh, we might be seeing some teams get their revenge. We might be seeing repeats. Uh, we got a couple of teams that have gotten off to rough starts, like Houston and Dallas, looking for big wins. We'll see if they can get them or if they continue to struggle. Um, but, yeah, should be a very fun week of matches. I will definitely be uh, watching um, all of the, the ones that have, that are at a reasonable time for us. Um, I will be watching them live. So hope you guys enjoy that. If there are a lot of technical issues, I might stream and like solo cast some of the games. Um, but we'll see a lot of times their technical issues are the same for us coming through, but, um, just a possibility to watch for, but as always, let me know what you think in the comments below. Any huge upsets you have any, um, if, are any of your teams coming back to action that you're excited to see? I know Dallas fans haven't seen their haven't seen their team in a long time, so hope you guys are excited. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have an awesome weekend. You stay safe, stay inside for the most part. You know, obviously you go outside, take a walk. You know, get a little bit of fresh air. Um, at least where I live, it is it is really nice right now. Um, so do that, but don't you know don't gather. Find stuff to do at home clean up your house, do whatever, watch some Overwatch League tomorrow, uh, Sunday, and if you are like a third, well, if you're a third shift person, maybe you can, uh, maybe you can, uh, and you get off, maybe you can uh, catch, catch some of the Chinese matches. But I hope that these weekends are super nice for you guys. Um, comments down below, let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next one.